In my recent NKS M1 personal rig video, I discussed the drawbacks of current tempered glass side panels for the NKS M1, namely that they protrude from or into the case, and hinted to a better solution, a solution we're going to be implementing today. So I'm going to show you what's needed for the ultimate NKS M1 tempered glass side panel mod, how to do it yourself, and if you want to pick up a completed panel ready to go, I'm also going to show you that too. While discussing the thermal differences between my tempered glass and non-tempered glass NKS M1, so especially if you're a small form factor enthusiast, get subscribed because we have a lot more unique and relevant content coming up. But ultimate tempered glass side panel mod, let's do this. So one of the things that makes this tempered glass side panel mod the ultimate solution is that we're using 0.7 millimeters thick tempered glass cut to the same dimensions as the original panel, including a one millimeter border radius. This means that when we're done mounting it, it should sit flush to the case, looking as close to a manufacturer option as possible, how a well implemented mod should. As we have the panels cut to size, this makes this mod extremely easy as there's only a few things left to do, which are implement a border into the panel to hide the frame of the case and figure out an elegant mounting solution, which I think I have. But quickly, there's something that we need to test is tempered glass panels are absolutely not worth it if you can't keep your components cool. So the core components of the system are a Ryzen 7 3700X 8 core 16 thread, currently cooled by a Corsair H100i Platinum, running an EVGA 2080Ti XE Ultra GPU. So we have some real horsepower and heat under the hood. And now for the obvious, we can't use the H100i Platinum because it would sit directly behind the tempered glass panel, completely starving it of fresh air, which means that we're going to have to swap it out for something different. And the optimal solution solution for this setup is this guy, the Noctua NHU9S cooler, and we're also swapping out the fans with the beautiful NFA9 Chromax fans. This has been the entire reason this video has taken me so long. Even Noctua have trouble getting these in stock, which reminds me. Thank you to Daniel from Noctua for sending these and the cooler over. I really appreciate it. As I'm using different stress tests nowadays, we're rerunning the tests, and let's take a look at the current temperatures with the ventilated panel and the H100i Platinum. Running OCCT and Fermark at the same time to really torture the system, the 3700X averages out 64.2 degrees with a maximum of 69 while our GPU averaged 60.5 degrees both were set to 100% fan speed for this test. So this is our baseline and I am expecting it to be better as a 240mm AO versus a 92mm cooler. It's kind of a no-brainer but as long as we can keep the temps in check I will be happy. But now let's work on the panel. What I've done is mask off a 20mm border to paint so that we can hide our soon to be mounting solution in case frame. After prepping the surface and applying a couple coats of glass safe paint and primer we have our finished piece. This. This is our V1 test piece, so we need to double check a couple of things. Mainly that the paint is going to hold for long term usage, for which I have some 400 grit sandpaper, and if it can take a moderate amount of pressure without coming off the glass, we have a winner. Looks good. While we're installing the new cooler, let's talk panel mounting. As we could use hinges, screws, push pins, there are plenty of mounting options, but the one that's most elegant to me is magnets. But the problem is that the frame of the NKS M1 is aluminium, which is not magnetic, so we need to apply a magnet solution to both the case and the side panel itself which I have here. This is ultra thin magnetic tape and the strength of it is going to be more than enough for our 160 gram side panel. So the first thing we have to do is sand down the top layer of paint so that the magnet tapes adhesive can stick properly to the surface. Then we have to attach this in a somewhat unique way as using the tape on itself causes a natural misalignment due to polarity. And if we don't account for this, our side panel isn't going to sit correctly on the case. But this can easily be fixed by applying the tape to the case first, then another piece on top of itself with the adhesive facing up before finally aligning the side panel to the case and dropping it onto the magnetic tape. And there we have it. When we lift the panel off the case, the panel's magnetic tape will be perfectly aligned to connect with the one on the case. And this means that removing the side panel is incredibly simple and elegant, while being strong enough to resist a small amount of pressure. So let's talk positives and negatives of this solution. Before we have a look at the thermals, starting with the positives, I think it looks absolutely incredible. The way that it sits on the case looks super close to a factory option, and the magnetic mounting is just so seamless and so premium, while giving a huge window into the case to see your glorious hardware. A 20mm border was definitely the right choice. Speaking of the border, I was initially concerned that the paint wouldn't hold, but after attacking it with sandpaper, it seems I got some pretty good paint advice on that. And as our panel is tempered glass, it won't scratch anywhere near as easily as the same solution made from acrylic. Smart people say no to acrylic side panels. So as for the negatives, the magnetic tape does work really well, but I also don't have cables butting up against the side panel putting pressure on it. This is the inherent issue with magnets, but we could also put some magnetic tape on the vertical sides too, to increase the strength. I'm sure we can all agree that it looks pretty, but let's see what impact we've made to the thermals and make sure that we're not overwhelming the system by implementing a tempered glass panel. And surprisingly, it looks really good actually. 
We're running just over six degrees warmer on the CPU and four degrees warmer on the GPU. I did expect to get worse results, but I also expected to get worse results than this, as we're blocking off a huge previously ventilated panel, while also swapping out 240 millimeter liquid cooler to a Noctua NHU9S. Big shout out to this little beast of a cooler, I would highly recommend it. So I think this project was a huge success and I absolutely love how it turned out. So what I'm going to do is put links to everything I use in the description for you. But I also had to buy a few of these custom cut glass panels to make a minimum order quantity. So if you want to buy a completed or even an untouched glass panel, I'm going to have them linked below for you. But also check the description in the comments for revision notes as I'm going to update the process and refine these panels for you guys. But the next video on my NKSM1 should be a really easy way to do beautiful full custom cables for most builds, ITX or otherwise. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications so that you don't miss that and upcoming videos. And otherwise, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.